Welcome to Navigating the Customer Experience. Want to improve your organization's customer service? Looking for insider tips to knock your customer socks off? Then you're in the right place. Here's your host, Yannick Grant. Welcome to Navigating the Customer Experience. On today's episode, we have with us a very special guest. His name is David Wax. David is a serial entrepreneur and his latest venture, Handwritten, is bringing back the lost art of letter writing through scalable robot-based solutions that write your notes in pen. Developed as a platform, Handwritten lets you send notes from your CRM system, such as Salesforce, the website, apps, or through custom integration. Used by major mailboxes, e-commerce giants, non-profits, and professionals, Handwritten is changing the way brands are connecting with people. Prior to his current initiatives, David found Sellit, a mobile marketing platform and mobile agency. Under his leadership, Sellit became a leading player in the mobile marketing space and invented the concept of mobile customer relationship management, mobile CRM. Sellit developed one of the most robust and widely used mobile marketing platforms in the world, delivering millions of SMS and MMS messages to consumers on a daily basis. With a marquee client roster including Abercrombie & Fitch, Toys R Us, Sam's Club, Chicago Tribune, For Rent Media Solutions, Pizza Hut and more, Sellit was recognized as one of the top 500 fastest growing companies in America, as number 262 on the Inc. 500 in 2010 and delivered many award-winning mobile campaigns and built one of the best teams in the mobile industry. Sellit was sold to Hello World in January of 2012. So without further delay, welcome David. Thank you so much. You're it's welcome. It's a pleasure to be here. All right. So could you share with us a little bit about your journey, you know, how you got to where you are? Um, sure. Um, so I was, uh, I went to school um, and, and uh, university and, and uh, tried to get a degree that would set me up to do entrepreneurship. So I thought b- being an engineer would be a good way and being a software engineer would be better because then you don't have to have any hard capital expense of um, machinery and equipment to start a business. All you need is a laptop computer. So I went to school for for business and engineering, computer science engineering, and entered the workforce with a very boring job doing consulting for large brands, um, just basically market sizings and and what I found to be rather dull stuff um, when I really wanted to start something. Um, did that for a few years, did investment banking, and then I ended up at a venture capital firm in San Diego, which was an absolute disaster. I thought it would be the best job ever. Mm-hmm. Uh, my my uh, boss, the partner of the company, was a crazy man. Um, he had me do such fun tasks as um, organize his his truck tires for his Mercedes uh, G-Wagon, and he had me <laughs> clean out his closets, and, and he spied on me. He actually set up a, uh, a camera in a garden owl that he placed outside my office, so it was just like this little plastic owl with a camera in it, oh, wow. and one day I looked at the outside my office, and I saw this camera, and I almost threw it against the wall, but... Um, that job did not last long. I actually got fired. They um, blamed some stock transaction on me that I had absolutely nothing to do with. I had no idea what they were talking about, but they needed an excuse to um, blame somebody for this. So they blamed it on the, the youngest guy in the office. Um, and I ended up back at square one. I didn't have a job. I didn't have any savings because I had spent all my money paying off school debt. I had quite a bit of school debt. So instead of um, saving a little nest egg, I spent it all on school debt and um, did not plan for the future. So I recommend to any anybody out there, while it's great to pay, pay down school debt, always keep a little cushion on the side just in case. Um, so I moved home. I didn't know what to do. I moved back to – I was still relatively young in my late 20s. Moved back to Arizona where I grew up um, into an apartment that my father had. And I um, kind of decided what the heck is going to be my ne- next adventure. So um, actually, my father said, 
couldn't you do something with blackberries and barcodes to get information on houses and this was before the invention of the iphone oh wow and and i said to him you know i don't know about blackberries and barcodes but what about text messages you could just text in for info on a house get the information and then the realtor could get a lead and so that is what i started i um, sat at a computer for a year came up with this thing called house for sale um, and then quickly pivoted house for sale because I thought realtors were kind of a pain in the neck to deal with. <laughs> uh, so I started, I created a second product under the sell it banner called, um, coupons app and coupons app was designed to be used by restaurants and bars to send out like drink alerts and happy hour specials and that thing, that type of thing. But it quickly got picked up by large brands like Abercrombie and Fitch and Toys R Us, that type of thing. Um, so that's kind of how it all happened. Um, that company I did not, other than taking um, a, a free place to live from my father, um, I didn't take any investment in that company. He ended up with a quarter of that company for rel- relatively small uh, investment. <laughs> um, but it was the best investment he ever made, and I'm happy that I was able to support him and the rest of my family with that. Um, sold that company. I did pretty well on that. And um, what happened was... Uh, you know, fast forward seven years when I sold that company, I realized that here we are in a day and age where everybody receives 300 emails a day. You receive uh, something like 100 or not 100, but 80 text messages a day. You get Slack messages and Twitter tweets and Facebook posts and everything just becomes noise. And I thought, you know, with all the electronic communication out there, And with traditional print media, you know, junk mail, for lack of a better term, it all just gets thrown away. You realize when you receive a personalized email message from your sales rep at wherever that it's not real, that it's just, uh, you know, automatically generated. (laughs) Yeah, everything is fake. So there and everything comes to you by the hundreds. So none of it matters. So I thought, well, what what matters? And I was walking around my old cell it. And uh, I realized that people saved and savored handwritten notes they received. Not only did they read them, they kept them. They kept them on the back of their uh, bookshelf, in, or you know, on, on their bookshelf in their office, or uh, they'd magnet them to their refrigerators at home. And you know, they they were considered kind of a treasure. So I thought, being the lazy guy that I am, how can I automate this? Because every time I'd send a handwritten note or want to send a handwritten note, um, like I'd go to the store and get a birthday card for a family member, I'd promise myself I'd send that birthday card, and then I'd get caught up in things or not have a stamp or whatever, and it just became, you know, this whole thing. And then before you know it, there's a crumpled up birthday card sitting in my uh, in in my laptop bag, um, not being used and, and never would go out. So I thought, how can we automate this? Mm -hmm. And that's where handwritten came from. I wanted to create a company that made sending handwritten notes as easy as sending emails or SMS or Slack or everything else. All right. And that's how handwritten was born. Amazing. It's, it's very interesting. Um, your, your, you know, your research that you did in terms of people holding on to handwritten notes and not just reading them, but keeping them because, you know, here in Jamaica, even with my clients, I find that it means so much to people when they do receive, as you said, an actual handwritten note. It, it means that the right. person put intentional effort and thought into what they were doing. And it wasn't just a generic thing that they sent out to, you know, to the masses. Exactly. So how has the experience been since you've launched Handwritten? How successful has it been? What have your clients been saying? Has it really created a better client experience? Yeah, so it was slow to take off. Uh, When I started the company in 2014, it took two to three, I would say, yeah, three, three and a half years to really uh, get going because there's nothing really like what we're offering out there. So it's not just about somebody comparing our handwriting service to another handwriting company. There really aren't too many out there. So people don't even know it's an option. Mm -hmm. Now we're seeing a lot 
uh, more interest in the service. We do about 120,000 notes a month currently, and uh, it's growing at about 300% a year, or at least it has been over the last few years. Hopefully, the growth will continue. Um, we do all these notes by using robots, um, and we've got just shy of 90 robots currently, and we build about three robots a week now using our own technology, which is wild, and I can get into that if you want. But as far as statistics, um, I have a lot, and I can pull those up, but the average handwritten note, uh, the open rate of handwritten notes is about three times what a print piece is. Mm. Um, so just by having a handwritten envelope, the open rates are much higher. But beyond that, the, the read rate, the redemption rates are all substantially higher than traditional print media and um, oftentimes uh, electronic um, forms of promotion. So for example, we work with a bespoke uh, clothing company that mm -hmm. they'll make suits for you. It's a, I, you know, we don't mention any of our client names, but it's a company where you can provide your measurements. They'll they'll get a suit made up for you, and they opened up a store, uh, a series of stores recently. So they're not just online, but they were sending out a, a, a 700 gift card coupons to their best clients, and they sent them using our service with a handwritten envelope and a handwritten note from the CEO. And they had a 17% redemption rate in gift cards um, and a 300% uh, return on investment on the overall promotion. So it was very successful for them. We've worked with them a few times. And um, they're eager to work with us again. Um, we work with in, when you kind of gave that <laughs> very generous overview of hand of me at the beginning. You mentioned that we work with meal boxes. Um, we work with one meal box in the United States. We we have a lot of these meal box companies that um, will send you all the ingredients for a nice meal, and then you put it together yourself. We work with several of these brands, um, and one of them sent out a handwritten note in every box welcoming new users to the, the meal box program. Um, they've done over 25,000 boxes with our notes in them, and they see it increases customer retention by 10, or it improves customer retention by 10%. Just having these little handwritten notes in the box. Mm -hmm. Very we good. work with yeah, we work with um, Amazon brands that are selling products on Amazon. They find that it in both increases good reviews on Amazon, which is what they're trying to do, as well as uh, reduce bad reviews. Because what they do is in the box of the Amazon product, they say, if you're having a problem with this, please contact us directly. Don't just post a review on Amazon. <laughs> and they find that it drastically reduces their every time – uh, you know, our clients include these with their their boxes. They find that it 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 some of them are using it more to reduce bad reviews than increase good reviews, basically. But yeah, I mean, the the examples kind of go on and on. Um, we work with realtors, and it increases their re you know their uh, return rate of their clients. Mortgage brokers, the same thing, all the way up to major car manufacturers and um, Italian fashion brands. So it's kind of universal, universally applicable to anybody that um, thinks a handwritten note might improve their relationship with their customer. Very good. And I imagine it's applicable to any form of literature or um, mail that you would send out. So if, say, for example, it's applicable to maybe a bill versus, let's say, a promotion versus, let's say, just an information pamphlet. Can it be applicable yeah. in all in all areas? Um, we tend to focus on thank you notes and um, uh, follow-ups after purchases. Sending out blanket notes just to mass groups can get quite expensive with handwritten notes because uh, if you think about it, a junk mail piece, um, when you print that, that's it. You just print the junk mail piece and it gets uh, a pre-sorted stamp on there and it's quite cheap. With us, we start with that printing. So if you take a, you know, a junk mail piece, um, often it's printed on cheap stationery. We're going to need something printed on nice stationery, you know, like with your logo. Um, so it looks like a, a true piece of stationery. So that's cost number one. Then we're going to write on it. And our handwriting machines are a little bit on the slow side. They they only write about as fast as a human, hmm. but they uh, they don't stop and take coffee breaks, and their handwriting never gets worse over time. <laughs> so that's that's going to be 
much more costly than junk mail. And, and unfortunately, there's not much we could do it, about it. And then finally, we're inserting that in a real envelope. We're not just like folding it over and gluing it and printing their address on the back like you'd get with junk mail. And then um, the last step is we put a real stamp on it. It's not a metered mail stamp that you'd see on a piece of junk mail. It's a, a real forever stamp. Mm. So like for an, all these like reasons... Like an ink stamp. Oh, yeah. Like a sticker you'd get in the States. Wow. You know, in, in the States... You know, it's a real, it's that little sticker that you place on a package. Right. Um, so the whole thing looks real. Uh, but the problem, you know, the, the I would say the downside of it, it, it is going to be more expensive than a junk mail piece. However, you know, you got to figure out what the right tool for the job is. And I think um, in saying thanks or asking for a referral or asking for a review on Amazon or Yelp or whatever, you're going to want to do something that's kind of a bit more premium. And especially if your client base is a bit more premium, um, you know, you might want to consider this. So it's not, I'm not going to say we're right for everybody. We did do a huge mailer for a jewelry brand that was opening up a new location um, and they wanted to send a handwritten note to everybody in the general area. And while it worked great, it is going to be much more costly. So that is one thing to consider. All right. Brilliant. So You've really uh, mastered the science of ensuring that the quality is not um, watered down in the, you know, in, in maintaining consistency of the experience in ensuring that your clients have, you know, quality handwritten notes. I, may, um, I, I listened when you gave mention to the fact that, you know, the robots don't get tired over time. They don't take coffee breaks oh, and sure. the quality of their handwriting doesn't deteriorate over time, which with human beings it will. Because in thinking of myself, when I'm writing, if I'm writing an, ex an excess over a period of time, if you look at the first page of what I wrote versus the third page, the handwriting does start to look a little different. You know, the letters are not Absolutely. probably formed as, as neatly um, and written as, you know, cautiously as you had started out before. So that's really, really good that you're able to maintain that consistency. Yeah. The, the reason, you know, a lot of people, a lot of brands would love to send handwritten notes to everybody, real handwritten notes written by, you know, and, and as nice handwriting as you have, Yannick, but but it's just it's it's impossible, and that's why the compute the the robots come in. Yeah. And is it the most authentic? I, I can sense in your voice, you know, it's it's a little bit not. And you're right, it, it's not totally authentic, but it's closer, and it shows an additional level of thoughtfulness than just laser printing something and sending it out the door. Right. Uh, but most of our notes are rather short. They're 500 characters or less. Um, and that's a couple of reasons. Number one, for cost base, uh, cost consideration, that's important. And then number two, we find that people don't want to read novels. You know, they want to read a very short thank you note from you, thanking you for your business or, you know, providing you a coupon code or whatever, but they don't want to have to sit down and read you know, people's attention spans are really um, on the low end these days. So they just want to get right to the point. And, and that's that's what we help them do. Mm -hmm. Actually, while you were speaking a while ago um, in terms of mentioning that it's not as authentic, what popped in my mind was if you're working with a brand, for example, do you get the actual handwriting of the CEO or the business executive that you are sending note from and the robot is able to copy that person's handwriting to the T? Yes, we can handle uh, CEO's handwriting, although most people opt for using one of our pre-designed styles as they've been put through the ringer. You can see all those handwriting styles at handwritten.com slash features, and that's handwritten with a Y, H-A-N-D-W-R-Y-T-T-E-N dot com slash features. Um, if you want to create your own handwriting style, we absolutely do that. It's a very involved uh, process. We have you repeat the alphabet multiple times, like three to five times in both upper and lower case so that we can capture all the nuances and randomness of your of your writing mm -hmm. um, because we're not creating one A or you know B or whatever. We create multiple versions so that your handwriting looks random or more random, you know, imperfect. We also capture all the subtleties of all the ligature combinations. So, um, two T's together, two L's together, two O's. 
Um, you know, how does an A look at the beginning of the word versus the end of the word? S's, double S's, um, any accents, smiley faces if you use those, or frowns or whatever. We can add all those to your handwriting along with a custom signature so that, you know, if you write your name differently than you would uh, just, you know, write any other word, we can, we can capture that too. Um, alternatively, if you're looking to same this, send the exact same note over and over, uh, not um, personalized in any way, we can duplicate a note exactly. So why would you want to do this? If you're doing an inbox uh, thank you where you don't know the name of the person, mm -hmm. but you want to provide a really organic looking handwritten note, um, we can do that by recreating your handwriting exactly. So it, unlike turning your handwriting into, you know, a digital handwriting style and then you type in a message and we re re recreate that. Now we're just duplicating your note exactly. And when we do that, we often include funny doodles or, you know, the note is really scrawly and kind of hard to read. However you want that to look, um, we can do that as well. Okay. All right. Um, yeah, and then uh, in addition to handwriting, if you want to use our service, we we do uh, gift card insertion. We do full fulfillment. So if you have like a if you come out with a book and you want to send your book with a handwritten note to 500 people or whatever, we can do fulfillment. Um, we're we're really trying to and, and business cards. So if you have uh, business cards you want to include with every handwritten note, we we do that too. So uh, really, we're just trying to become your uh, digital secretary for lack of a better term. Mm, I love it. All right. Okay, David. So we're now at the question of what's the one online resource tool, website, or app that you couldn't live without in your business? Um, there's, there's several, uh, I really, we, we use Slack around here a lot, um, mm -hmm. just to communicate with our office workers. We also communicate with our robots through Slack. So the robots will actually let us know when they're low on ink or out of paper or jammed. This way, there's not just beeping going off all over the office all the time. People get targeted alerts on their phone when, um, when things happen. Um, we also use Help Scout here for uh, to manage customer service requests. Mm -hmm. I think that's a phenomenal tool. Um, if I had to pick one tool, however, I would have to say Zapier. Are you are you familiar with Zapier? Yes, I know it. Oh yeah, we mm -hmm. we use Zapier for everything around here, and handwritten is actually a Zap as well. So you know you can trigger um, handwritten notes from any Zap action, basically. Excellent. All right, talk about efficiency. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, could you could you share with our listeners maybe one or two books that you've read either long time ago or recently that have had the biggest impact on you? Yeah, for sure. Uh the the one that the that stands out as absolutely the most impact is uh E Myth by Michael Gerber. Um it's Excellent an oldie book. but a good yeah, it's an oldie but a goodie, uh really talking about how a business owner should not be working in, in the business, business, but on the business. But on the business, yes. Uh, that has been, you know, a simple, it's a simple idea with powerful ramifications. Uh, another book is Traction, uh, which is really talking about the uh, entrepreneurship operating system of how to run a company. Um, I'm reading that currently. Uh, that's that's quite good. Um, th I would say those are, you know, when I pick books, I pick very nuts and bolts, not high level, highfalutin ideas. I like to really kind of get into the weeds. Mm -hmm. uh, so I find traction. So yeah, traction has been a very, has been a good book as well. But, um, and, and traction kind of takes you through building out your, you know, the, your three year time frame, your one year time frame, your five year time frame, kind of your, uh, the, the unique processes to your business. Um, it helps you with hiring. It helps you with meeting taking and how often you should take meetings. It's been it's been a, a, a very interesting read. Excellent. So Traction is by Gino Whitman, and we'll have yep. the we'll have the link to that book as well as Emith in the sh uh, show notes of this episode for all of our listeners who may want to tap into those books that. Uh, David has been so kind to share with us. All right. So David, could you tell us one thing that's going on in your life right now that you're really excited about? Either something that you're working on to develop yourself or your people. 
Uh, yeah, well, in the short term, we're rolling out a new website. Um, I'm hoping it'll continue to make us look, you know, more and more professional. I think we do look professional currently, but our new website is super cool. And I uh, suggest anybody look at handwritten.com after March 1st. Um, there's been a lot of love and care that has gone into that website and, and branding. Um, as far as people goes, handwritten is really kind of restructuring or continuing to build out and grow. You know, we're kind of a six-year-old startup at this point, and we're looking to hire more and more vertically focused salespeople. So we just hired somebody in December to focus strictly on healthcare. Um, we're now hiring people for the automotive vertical and some others um, as we just continue to grow. I love that we've built this into a 25, 26-person company, uh, and there's a lot of room there um, to create jobs. You know, people say, you know, aren't your robots taking away jobs? Well, not at Handwritten. At Handwritten, robots are creating jobs. So nobody here would have a, a job without these robots. So that, that's kind of fun. Um, the technology is always very interesting here. We use 3D printers and laser cutters to build these things. Um, and it's just really cool to see how we can build them better, faster, cheaper, uh, while maintaining the quality of the end writing or improving the quality of the end writing. I do uh, sometimes not take Michael Gerber's advice and I work in the business. <laughs> I'm the guy that programs the robots and uh, we're doing some stuff on a security, you know, so God forbid somebody were to steal a robot, we're locking them down so they'd be useless. I mean, there's just little fun stuff like that that, you know, appeals to my geeky side. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I would say that just uh, I'm excited to continue improving the brand of handwritten uh, and also this fulfillment offering, you know, um, build out our warehousing fulfillment capabilities so that if people want to have us ship products for them, we're, we're, we're capable to do that. All right. Sounds awesome. So if our listeners wanted to connect with you further after they've listened to this episode, could you share with us where they could find you online, your website, yep. Twitter, Facebook, LinkedIn, you know, anywhere that you hang out? Yeah, for sure. So um, Twitter is the, probably the easiest. I'm David B, as in boy, Wax, W-A-C-H-S. That, that's my Twitter, David B. Wax, um, or just David Wax on LinkedIn. Um, and always looking to meet new people. Uh, Facebook, I keep rather private, but uh, but LinkedIn and Twitter are, are there. And you can always visit handwritten.com as well. Um, and click connect, uh, contact and you'll get one of my great team members to assist you as well. All right. So all those links that David indicated just now for Twitter and for LinkedIn, as well as for the website, we'll have as links in our show notes of this episode, if it is you'd like to take the conversation that much further. All right. So as we wrap up this wonderful episode, the last thing I would like to ask you, David, is do you have a quote or a saying that yep. during times of adversity or challenge... Yep you tend to revert to it and it kind of helps you to refocus. Yes. Uh, so when I was in college, I had, the, and this was, uh, I'm dating myself, but going back over 20 years now, <laughs> I had the fortune of going out to dinner. We, I used to be in a group that would bring speakers to campus and we brought all sorts of great um, celebrities and um, uh, people to campus. But uh, And when we do this, sometimes we'd have the opportunity to go out uh, to dinner with them or you know speak with them one-on-one. -on -one. And I had the opportunity to meet Conan O'Brien. And you wouldn't think he has words of advice, but his words of advice to me were always get in over your head. Um, and it's funny, when I was on that Inc. 500 list back in 2012 or 2015 or whatever that was, I, that was the quote I wanted to use. But a buddy of mine also was on the Inc. 500 list with his company, and I had told him that quote, and he stole it from me, or you know, stole it from me who took it from Conan O'Brien. So <laughs> uh, I think about that all the time. Um, in tough times, always get in over your head, you know, and and it's not over. You know, you don't lose until you quit in the business game. You know, there's no like. And, uh, you know, it's, there's no like uh, ninth inning or whatever. It just doesn't just end like that. So um, you only lose when you, when you, when you give up or, or quit or whatever. So hang in there and always get in over your head. All right. Always get in over your head. <laughs> Very challenging yet exciting. Um, all right. So thank you so much, David. I know we had a lot of um, technological difficulties yeah. throughout this episode, but we stuck it out, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we did indeed. <laughs> And I just want to tell you, thank you so much for your patience and for taking time to share 
all of the wonderful knowledge and insights that you've gained over the years. Share about your company, share about, you know, just reaching customer experience on a different level, all while scaling your business and, you know, providing jobs and creating growth in the economy. So I really appreciate the time that you've taken to share with us. Thank you, and thanks for the patience with all these uh, tech glitches here. <laughs> uh, uh, thank And thank you to your listeners. You're welcome. So before we go, just wanted to remind our listeners, if they'd like to connect with us f- further from here, feel free to follow us on Twitter at Navigating CX. And we have a closed Facebook group called Navigating the Customer Experience Group. Feel free to jump in and hang out with us in that group as well. So until next time, I'm your host, Yannick Grant. Thanks for listening. For more awesome resources to take your customer service game to another level, head over to navigatingthecustomerexperience.com. See you next time.